I knew he had a compelling story when I invited him to be a guest speaker in my honors class focused on drugs. It wasn't until he told his story in my class that I understood the struggles faced by him and so many others. Stories of survival, hope, and redemption. I was at the edge of my seat, hanging on his every word. He was the product of statutory rape, his father 29 years old, his mother only 15 years old. Both were convicted murderers. Most of those around him were involved in the drug trade. He attended high school, but he was also dealing drugs. His mother even taught him how to make crack cocaine in the microwave. In addition to all that, he helped care for his two younger sisters and his grandfather. Life on the streets caught up with him and he ended up getting shot and was eventually arrested, serving time like so many members of his family and his community. When he was released, his uncle, who had also been recently been released, after his third time in prison for drug trafficking, choosing to turn his life around, convinced him to attend some meetings of a program called Hang Time. He attended just to appease his uncle, but he had every intention on returning back to the street hustle. The meeting, however, had a profound impact on him, changing his whole mindset. The transformation didn't happen overnight, but slowly a new life started taking shape. He ended up working with Hang Time and other community programs focused on reentry and violence reduction. He spent the next several years helping others, like his uncle helped him, and against all odds, stayed focused on carving a new path for himself. He even went back to school and got his bachelor's degree and in January of 2021 received a pardon. This is just one of the many stories of the people I have met through reentry programs in Connecticut. Stories of human growth and journeys towards redemption. These programs are vital to the success of both men and women returning from prison. Mr. Charles Grady, the founder of Hang Time, is a retired police detective who has a unique perspective on those incarcerated having put hundreds of individuals in prison over his 21 year career and now helps hundreds of men and women returning from incarceration. Hang Time is based in Bridgeport, Connecticut and has the sole purpose of creating community and providing a safe space for those returning from prison. In a small state with a very wealthy population, Bridgeport and other communities still suffer from disproportionate poverty, crime, and incarceration. Programs like Hang Time help in so many different ways. Pre-COVID, they would hold weekly meetings, providing warm meals and a safe space for men and women to articulate the challenges they faced. Additionally, they help secure state IDs, create resumes, help getting jobs and finding housing, and help overcome the obstacles they face. Partner programs were also created. Her Time, which focuses on the specific needs of women, not only ones that are returning from serving a sentence, but those women who are caring for their families while their husband or partner is incarcerated. Another partner program, Champ Mentoring, giving youth an outlet through creative arts, health awareness, and counseling. Through these programs, it was evident to me that these are critical stepping stones 
for those wishing to change their lives. These problems don't just exist in a small state like Connecticut, but are nationwide. The United States has the largest per capita prison population in the entire world. Over the last decade, there have been more than 800,000 men and women on parole each year and close to 900,000 in the last few years. When people return into the same community, into the same environment, with the same challenges they had before, Adding to that, that they now carry the scarlet letter, the negative label of being an ex-convict. This makes it extremely difficult for them to be successful on the outside. You need a job, but getting one is very difficult. You need housing, but to get housing, you need a job. The challenges are many, but the resources are few. This is why it is so important to honor those who are living proof of the power of redemption, that second chances are not wasted, and that with some resources and help, they can truly transform their lives and make amends for the damage done to their communities. That is why in 2020, numerous organizations in Connecticut came together and publicly recognized eight individuals who were formerly incarcerated, but who have since their release made some outstanding contributions in their communities. The program is the first of its kind in the nation, and it's called the Connecticut Hall of Change. The Connecticut Hall of Change was the brainchild of Hangtime founder, Mr. Charles Grady, and partnering with the Connecticut Department of Corrections and the Connecticut Arts Preservation and Museums, along with several other organizations, to make this idea a reality. The committee accepted nominations from the community statewide. Many worthy nominations were submitted but they selected eight men and women who exemplified change. They are now known as the Great Eight. Miss Tahiba Bain, Mr. Michael Askew, Mr. Daryl McGraw, Mr. Kelvin Young, Miss Robin Cullen, Miss Babs Rawls Ivy, Mr. Iran. Nazario and Miss Larice Harvey. They were honored in a ceremony at the state capitol in Hartford, and a plaque was unveiled as a permanent exhibit at the Old New Prison in East Granby, Connecticut, which was the first prison in Connecticut and is now a historical landmark. I would love to be able to share all their stories, but only have time to share two. On her 21st birthday, Larice Harvey says she was jumped in front of her home while defending herself and was arrested and charged with manslaughter. She was a single mother of two, now facing a lengthy sentence. Being a first time offender, they put her in with youth offenders. When one of the young ladies in the cell block killed herself, Larice joined the other girls so they can come together and discuss what happened and provide support and hope to the group. She took the opportunity to make it better for others around her. She was intimately familiar with the adverse effects of trauma, particularly the trauma of incarceration. One of the correctional officers was studying to be a social worker and treated the young women with dignity and respect, calling them by their names instead of their inmate number and treating them like human beings. It was through these experiences that she decided to become a social worker herself. When she was released, she faced many challenges. Finding a job, 
finding housing, and most importantly, family reunification. She ended up going back to school and obtaining three associate's degrees and a bachelor's degree in social work. She started working with the Better Way Foundation, where they were doing grassroots lobbying, becoming a lead lobbyist herself. Larisse helped change 200 policies and helped pass 50 pieces of bipartisan legislation focused on corrections, addiction, public health, juvenile justice, education, and housing. She wanted to be a beacon of hope and make sure that it was better for others on the inside as well as on the outside. The struggle had still continued, and after being home from prison for over 20 years, she became ill in 2015, battling post-traumatic stress syndrome and seizure disorder. She lost her job due to this in 2016, and unable to get help, she ended up homeless. Larisse overcame this challenge as well, and in 2019, she co-founded Once Incarcerated, which offers peer support to adults and juveniles who are currently or were formerly incarcerated. She is one of the great eight recognized for her work in creating new legislation in areas she was intimately familiar with because she experienced them herself and her work supporting the community. Iran Nazario grew up on the streets. He was in foster care and had contact with the Department of Children and Families and the juvenile justice system regularly. Gang life was a way of survival. Daily life had become a battlefield and the only way to survive was to secure a sense of family, safety, and power. Iran didn't do drugs, his chemical of choice alcohol. He continued down this path and accepted violence as a norm, a lifestyle, and his addiction. He had done time in the state and subsequently federal systems. Coming out, he also faced many challenges. The draw of the lifestyle. Also, living up to the role that he played before he went in. He was desired by the group. He had a reputation and friendships that came with expectations. Returning to that lifestyle was easier as he was not equipped with the proper coping skills and never learned how to break bad habits. While still in the gang, he became a sort of spokesperson for the group and meeting with the mayor, priests, and police to mediate ceasefires. He didn't have a high school degree, so what opportunities could he have? He ended up taking a job with a university in Connecticut, not because he was interested in the job, but because he needed the money. Iran handed out research surveys to his community. He would even show up to the university still wearing his gang colors. But something felt different when he was there. He realized he was repeating the same mistakes and repeating the same behaviors and ending up in the same situations. Even after the job finished, his thoughts seemed to go back there quite often. It gave him a chance to see what life had to offer and what it could be like. Would he still be chased by the police if he were there? No. Would he have to worry about getting shot at if he were there? Also, no. Iran wanted to feel that safe feeling again. He wanted his family to feel that. And most importantly, he wanted his community to feel safe. He had already taken so many risks for bad. Why not take a risk for good? Iran started working in various areas, including gang prevention, youth outreach, and youth engagement. 
He wanted to help others get out of the gang life and fell in love with service. Iran worked for 11 years as a crisis responder, violence interrupter, and mediator in some of the most dangerous communities in Connecticut. In 2016, he founded the Peace Center in Hartford, and he serves as its president and CEO. The ultimate goal of the Peace Center is to achieve peace in the communities and to ensure that differences are respected. In 2019, he also became the director of Hang Time in Hartford as that program extended to three additional cities. Iran has won numerous awards for his work, including the 2016 Community Service Award from Senator Coleman, 2017 Polaris Award winner for his service to the Hartford community, and now one of the great eight. Being released from prison poses many challenges with little to no resources provided or available. Having the stigma of incarceration is perhaps the heaviest burden. For those who were able to rise to the occasion and not only overcome the obstacles they faced as returning citizens, but transform their lives and the lives of the community around them, need to be recognized. The Connecticut Hall of Change will be honoring another eight men and women in 2021, providing a model for other states to follow. Memorializing these eight men and women in the Connecticut Hall of Change gives others the encouragement that life after incarceration can be a restorative journey of hope and of healing. Thank you.